So we'll call to order this um, special meeting of the Board of Selectmen on June 22nd, 2022. Just gonna, there's a lot of people coming in. But just so everybody knows, Ruth is in here with me. Okay. Hi, Ruth. All righty. I'm going to directly turn the floor over to um, Connie Manis so she can um, give us the full presentation. Great. Well, um, thanks, Jean. And uh, thank you to the Board of Selectmen for calling this special meeting today. Uh, I am I'm speaking to you uh, as the, the chair representative of the ARPA subcommittee. Um, the committee, as you know, was convened and charged uh, last August to conduct a needs assessment and make recommendations for the use of Kent's allocation of American Rescue Plan funds, otherwise known as ARPA. Of course, my phone rings, I apologize. Um, we met weekly or bi-weekly for the better part of a year. Uh, and on June 6th uh, of this year, delivered the 12 page report that is in your meeting materials, uh, along with 44 pages of exhibits that show the basis for our conclusions and recommendations as well as providing direction for how they might be implemented. Um, I hope that you've made time to review these. Um, the report, 12 pages, consists of, of I think it's five sections, um, following an introduction. Uh, there is um, some uh, basic lead-in information about ARPA and the, the act that, uh, you know, that guides the allocation of these funds, uh, a description of our methodology, our recommendations and a closing statement uh, that um, I want to read to you. Um, so let me just do that. Uh, this is the statement of the committee that after months of information gathering and discussion, the committee is satisfied that we've developed recommendations that are in keeping with the ARPA guidelines, address the real needs of our community as articulated to us in the survey, in focus groups, and in one-on-one -on -one con conversations are fair and balanced, add tangible long-term benefit to our community as a whole, are understandable not only to the Board of Selectmen, but to the people of Kent who have great interest in the subject of ARPA funds and who should read this report in full. After all, the $821,855 awarded to us by the federal government belongs to the taxpayers of Kent, not to any particular committee or board. The ARPA committee has done a comprehensive study of how the pandemic affected Kent's community from disasters, oftentimes opportunities present, present themselves. This report attempts to address both the consequences of the pandemic and opportunities to improve our town. The report provides an even-handed methodology for processing and dispensing Kent's allocation of US Treasury recovery funds. It is the committee's sincere expectation that the Board of Selectmen recognize the value in our efforts, the fairness in our recommendations, and approve the recommendations we've made in totality or in majority part. So rather than walk through all of the sections of our report and the recommendations, uh, we, we do hope that you've had time to read it and the committee wish to spend uh, our time together tonight uh, answering your questions and allowing for your deliberation. Thank you. I, I think it would be helpful to um, talk about each of the buckets that you created um, and just some of the sort of methodology behind how you created the assignments for each one of the categories. Do you have specific questions about those? Um, I do. I was, I was thinking that you all would um, go over each of the categories and um, how you decided on how you were allocating the funds. Yeah, so, I mean, there are, 
months of meeting minutes and recordings yeah. on our deliberations on these. I think it's probably impossible to capture all of the nuances of how we decided on the allocations of each of these categories, other than to say that it is based fully and wholly on the information that we gathered in the survey, in our focus groups, in correspondence to the committee and in one-on-one -on -one interviews, many of them, uh, that we, um, you know, among the committee members, uh, you know, uh, all went out and spoke with people um, about their needs. So as you can see, there are six categories um, of, uh, you know, six, six buckets, if you will, of, uh, of places where we felt the, um, you know, the funds should be uh, divided amongst. Uh, number one of those is aid to individuals and families that experienced um, economic harm because of COVID. And to that category, we allocated $100,000 to be dispersed in amounts up to $5,000 each based on uh, full documentation of the harm and uh, with an expectation of a report afterwards about how those funds were used. Uh, as a second category, uh, we have local businesses that experienced economic harm because of COVID. And to that category, we also allocated $100,000 in amounts up to $10,000 each, again, with the expectation of full disclosure uh, and documentation of the harm and with a report afterwards um, showing uh, what the uh, grant award was applied to, how it was used. As a third category, we have 200,000 to uh, our local nonprofits in amounts of up to $15,000. That category takes into account that nonprofits as businesses uh, might have experienced economic harm just like other local businesses, but also that nonprofits have a, a, a special uh, mission of providing a public benefit uh, to people in town and that nonprofits would be able to put together responsive programming that would help to mend some of the harms that were caused by the COVID pandemic. And so that is why that one, that category looks a little bit different. It's in recognition that those funds might be used both to address economic harms experienced by those nonprofit businesses, but also be used proactively to serve our community. The fourth category is municipal projects that address town needs. Uh, we heard a lot um, from our townspeople and from, uh, you know, um, from the departments uh, in town. Um, and we feel that we made allocations that are appropriate to the needs that were being um, con you know, communicated to us. And that allocation amount is $180,000. And that is broken down to specific projects that you will find in the report. Uh, the fifth category is infrastructure upgrades to which we allocated $150,000, again, based on information that we were hearing about infrastructure needed in our town and, uh, and uh, directed towards specific projects um, that were communicated to us. The sixth category is uh, to our Kent Volunteer Fire Department. Uh, which certainly emerged as a, an organization that our townspeople feel is critical to our town, deserving, and that helped us to weather the storm of COVID. And the $80,000 that is allocated to the fire department is, again, uh, in response to specific uh, items that the fire department communicated to us that uh, would be helpful to them, uh, both in, in terms of redressing things that are COVID related and um, serving our town. Uh, finally, there is a small amount of money that didn't fit into all of those pots, those round numbers. And so that final $11,855 uh, is left to be, uh, you know, to, to stay there in reserve, uh, be reallocated within those six categories. Um, it, you know, it, it's, it's truly left over. 
other questions that I can answer for you? Or do any of my committee members want to add anything to what I've just said? Jean, I see Joe's hand up. Go for it, Joe. Uh, you're on mute, Joe, sorry. You're still on mute. One mute for the computer and one mute for um, Zoom. And if you're on an I on any device, it might be that your volume is turned down also possibly, but you're still showing for us that you're on mute. Okay. Got it. <laughs> awesome. Uh, yes. Um, I just wanted to, um, to say how, um, uh, well, as what Connie was saying, that the uh, the six categories, they it it was like an all encompassing um, uh, field that uh, that we came up with, and if there is another grouping that we had forgotten about or didn't mention, I you know it would. It would be great to to uh, to know that because I cannot think of any other area that uh, that we uh, didn't um, include. Is there one? I don't. I anybody? <laughs> Rufus, Glenn, anybody have a thought on that? No, I I think we took care of. Um... Of all areas, as far as I can see. And <clears throat> I was just like, I was thinking about this today, is that out of all of the six categories that Connie just mentioned, that to, um, out of all of those, there were, there are 16 different recommendations in other words, 16 discrete recommendations, you know, if that could make things easier to focus in on for discussion, you know, that may be a, um, an approach. I don't know if, if everyone um, understands what I'm, what I'm mentioning. In other words, for each of the six categories, um, starting out with nonprofits, there were six different nonprofits that we recommended uh, allocating uh, ARPA funds for. Um, after that, there were three recommendations for the Kent Volunteer Fire Department that we recommended. After that, there were two infrastructure recommendations that we had and then there were five municipal project recommendations so there are 16 altogether projects i mean if if there were questions that uh, people had that wanted to focus in on one of them that may make things easier to, to, to kind of uh, isolate. So I just wanna make sure that the committee has a chance under this agenda item um, to offer any anything else um, before we move into the public comment Q&A piece. We have nothing else to offer as presentation. Great. 
We look forward to questions and to your deliberations. Thanks. So moving into um, public comment, if you wanna raise your hand virtually or come on camera and wave. <laughs> um, I don't see any hands up so far. Um, why don't we, oh, there's one. Lynn Worthington. So my only question was, um, you guys, uh, the committee didn't advertise for submissions, but yet you got, you clearly got a lot of submissions from different organizations. And um, I wonder why you decided to make those recommendations rather than wait for applications. Let me answer that question if I can for you, Lynn. Um, I, I, you know, we made clear in our report, uh, I forget what page it's on, um, but it is absolutely true that we, um, as a committee, never solicited uh, applications um, from anyone, individuals, businesses, nonprofits. And that when, uh, when different entities contacted us, uh, with information about how they might have been harmed or how they would uh, potentially use ARPA funding if they uh, received any. Uh, we also made it clear at that time that what we were doing was conducting a needs assessment and that we were not uh, asking for application and we had no authority uh, to make a grant. Um, and so, you know, the, the, the information that we received to that end uh, was informative to us in directing, you know, in, in, in shaping our recommendations. At the same time, our committee felt strongly that, uh, you know, the, the nonprofits, the fire department, the entities that went to the trouble of preparing, you know, some substantial information to us about what their harm was and, uh, you know, how they might use ARPA funding. We felt that that was a little bit different uh, from starting from square one, uh, you know, which is what, uh, you know, what, uh, what some applicants will be doing. And so the mention of those six nonprofits, I, uh, you know, in the report uh, was our way of recognizing that they had already provided us with information that we thought uh, very much um, uh, was, uh, you know, informative to an application. Like, so it's almost like a hybrid or a shortcut. Um, but clearly, that is not the universe of nonprofits in our town. It is not the universe of uh, entities that might apply for ARPA funding. And it's certainly the case that some of these nonprofits in the report might now that an application process is available withdraw their first request and make a request anew because we're months and months down the road and some of them may have taken care of, of some of their needs. And so, um, you know, I, I just wanna make clear that uh, in no way did the committee believe that uh, these six nonprofits exhausted, you know, the need and the potential um, to address ARPA needs in our community. And that the application process is not meant to be one that is arduous. Um, it is uh, meant to be quick and, uh, and, and pretty concise. And that uh, our anticipation was that we would be able to easily um, give out the remainder of that $200,000 uh, worth of funding. So, so it's kind of a hybrid. It's not, uh, you know, it, it's not that, um, and, and I, I do not um, think that any nonprofits will be harmed by us doing this way. it this way. It's just that the committee members felt that, uh, that the information that we had received was akin to, you know, what we would ask for in an application. Um, Matt Winter, you have your hand up.
Matt, do you want to come off mute? I see that you have your hand up. May have stepped away, but we can come back. So Connie, were there nonprofit, not-for-profits that um, did not end up in the recommendations? Uh, I believe that there were a couple and they were not local nonprofits. So the strong recommendation is that nonprofits be uh, providing a direct benefit. So it's a, it's a little bit nuanced, but let me see if I can describe this. Uh, at the outset of our needs assessment, there were uh, there were communications that we received that were general communications to the region uh, coming out of the Council of Governments. And Jean, you may remember some of these, right? So, so it was the case that like a region-wide nonprofit said, uh, we would like for all of the uh, towns in the COG to put in a certain share you know, of their ARPA funding in order to support this lump sum request. So those we took out, we didn't know what was happening with those. Uh, and we really felt um, very strongly that we wanted our funds to go first to Kent-based nonprofits that are directly serving the community of Kent. Okay, so there are, you know, a number, a large number of those regional providers that do provide direct services. So I think it the, the board should probably get that list so that we can make sure that we're not. Um, I believe you have a list of every single entity that communicated with us. Okay. So, uh, and, and let me stress that we did not consider any of those as being actual applications. And by not including them in the report, we oh. did not make any kind of a statement that those were not deserving of ARPA funding only that they were not listed in the report as, uh, as entities that we recommended absolutely that an allocation be made. Yes, and the majority of the um, recommended pool amount in that category is still open for application. We literally only identified a little more than a quarter of the funds to go to those more obviously local. And there's still quite a bit of money that can be dispersed to other deserving nonprofits. I think that's it. What do you say? Somebody is off mute um, and we're getting a lot of background. Oh, I think they just went on mute. Um, I also want to add in that during our committee meetings, there was a lot of discussion about this particular issue, and it was decided that upon uh, the ratification of our recommendations that I would reach out to everyone that had already communicated to us and send them the application applicable to their group or, or whatever they are, and along with a copy of the recommendation. So if they wanted to apply for funding, they could. So no one would be just ignored. Okay. Matt Starr has had his hand up for a bit. Hi, thanks, Jean. Hi, Matt. Um, first off, uh, I just want to thank the ARPA committee. You guys did an outstanding job. Connie, uh, thanks for being the chair. Um, I think you guys put a lot of effort into this, and uh, I have been following it as I can, and uh, I just want to thank you all for that. Uh, my question is really for the Board of Selectmen, as you digest this information that the uh, ARPA committee presented, one of the things that's been talked about throughout COVID and batted around is the Town of Kent Emergency Management Plan and how it hasn't been updated as required in, was it Gene, 12, 13 years? About. No. Um, and, and I'm just not sure why the town didn't, I know David left, but why the town didn't submit a request to the ARPA committee asking for funds to have a contractor um, update our plan. I mean, people do this for a living. They, uh, professionals, 
I know the batting around of stipends for the individuals and all the reasons why it hasn't been done, but for the taxpayers, not having our plan updated with the proper names, the proper information is just such a disservice to the town because God forbid we have another pandemic or another major event, that plan has to be updated. I was on emergency management. It's, I, I can't believe number one, that it's been so long and it hasn't been done. So I hope hearing that there's some extra money that the board of um, selectmen put together, uh, it's not a lot of funds either to get this done. Some money out of this ARPA account to get our emergency management plan updated, regardless who's in the positions of emergency management, and regardless if the some of the spots are empty, and also provide the required training that a lot of the town's um, public works, town hall staff, different commissions are all required to have and haven't hasn't been done. I mean, we're talking years here. Um, you know, 12, 13 years, and it still hasn't been completed. So I, I think that's a big priority for you guys. And you can't just look the other way and, and not address it. And again, ARPA committee, thanks so much. Thanks, Matt. Yeah, I, I believe there was a, um, a request submitted to the committee. Um, for emergency management funding for the LEOP and a pandemic annex or something like that. I don't, I don't remember that. I'm not sure if we ever talked about it because I, I don't recall talking about whether or not that would be an eligible use. I don't recall receiving a request for that either. No one was sent to Glenn and Barbara, didn't you get something from Eric Epstein? I, I don't know if I did. I'd actually have to go back through my emails, but everything that I received, we included in our our matrix that we that we were using. I'm, I'm pretty sure that that there was something submitted, but I, I do agree with Matt that we need to, that this would be a, an eligible, I mean, it would make sense to, yeah. to if there's money in here to. Yeah, find. it may have been received after we had already stopped using our matrix, because once we had decided on our categories and our buckets, we stopped using that matrix for decision making pretty mm -hmm. much. But anyway. I still don't remember our committee collectively receiving that correspondence because I, I'm fairly certain that we would have had a discussion about whether or not hiring a consultant was an eligible use of this funding. And I do not recall ever having that discussion. Anyway, I think that's an issue that we don't need to get hung up on in the um, discussion and evaluation of the whole report. Sure. Um, Matt Winter, you did have your hand up. I just wanted to check back in to see if um, you could hear us, if you wanted to come off mute. Maybe, can you hear me now? We can hear you loud and clear. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Um, sure. so I, I was having some connectivity issues, so I'm, I'm pulled over. And uh, first, I would I would um, echo Matt Starr's comments that uh, that the committee, um, the uh, needs assessment committee, has spent a tremendous amount of time and made a tremendous effort. And um, for my part, um, I would extend a, a heartfelt thank you. I mean, you handled this difficult task with uh, with um, true aplomb. Um, I will say, though, that uh, with regard to the, the discussion um, surrounding the, um, the hybrid approach to the, to the, the hybrid approach to the not-for-profit section, um, I think that there's a risk that um, 
there's a risk that by alloc having allocated, um, as Patricia said, the, maybe the 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 twenty five percent of that two hundred thousand um, dollars will leave some not for profits um, without funding. If you know there's there's a possibility of that 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 if that fifty thousand dollars comes out and there's one hundred fifty thousand dollars left, um, that those people who didn't submit an application because they were so much told not to might be left out in the cold. Um, so that's my comment. I know you've addressed it and answered answered that in your way. Um, so thanks for your time. Thanks, Matt. Somebody near the church. <laughs> I can't turn on. that off. <laughs> that's next door. <laughs> that's um, I, I'm thinking of this as, I mean, first of all, I thought it was very well presented. Thank you, Connie and Joe, Glenn, Ruth, Patricia, whoever else is on the committee. Um, this is like sort of the first step. So if you open up the applications, just because these were identified at this point doesn't necessarily mean, and I think Connie addressed that a little bit, their, their needs may have changed over the previous months. So there, there is a certain pool of money that it might make sense to, to look at with the nonprofits. Um, and then we would have to if more came in, we'd really have to balance out and rethink, you know, where the importance is. Um, and, and I would think that at this stage, when you go to all the local nonprofits and say, you know, here's the application and here's the time frame for you to apply, um, that would also apply to the, the ones that have already presented information that would be part of that process. So I, I don't see this, um, and maybe I'm, you know, as set in stone, except for maybe the Kent Cemetery Association, but that's bad, bad joke. Um, Let me just clarify you know just uh what our recommendation and hope would be and that is that this money be dispersed so part of that recommendation of those first three classes and the allocation of a hundred thousand that is uh, of grants up to five and a hundred thousand that is of grants up to ten and two hundred thousand that is of grants up to fifteen is to enable the uh, whoever the Board of Selectmen delegates to uh, disperse these funds, our strong recommendation is that it be the treasurer of the town to move that money out because um, people, I mean, this. let's not forget that the reason behind these funds is that people experienced economic harm, people and businesses and nonprofits and our community as a whole. And so, you know, although uh, we took a long time to collect our information and to deliberate and to get to the point where we're delivering this report to you today. Uh, you know, it was really our feeling towards the end of our meetings that, you know, uh, that, that we needed to make sure that we got this to you so that you could start to move the money out uh, and, and address these needs. Um, so it was our hope, and here's the clarification, that the granting process would be ongoing as soon as you open the applications. That it was not a question of the Board of Selectmen opening the applications, seeing what it receives after a period of some weeks, coming back and deliberating and making, uh, you know, making decisions. That the decision is made to disperse that pot and the applications open and the money is dispersed. So in, in talking about, um, again, those first three categories, um, I think that makes sense. And I think it make, it does make sense to have Barbara, not that she needs more on her plate, but um, she's 
you know, just shoulder deep in the knowledge base. And she is the one who is responsible to the treasury for, for the reporting, for making sure that the, the funds are um, expended for eligible parties. So I think that does make sense to have Barbara be that point person. And I agree, Connie, that it shouldn't be a two-step process of someone applying, then the board needs to approve those people, then the funds get um, dispersed. I think it makes, and this is, you know, thinking out loud here with the board, um, that just like it says in the report that the eligibility criteria will be created that will go with the application and we'll do, a, you know, advertise it out um, to the community so that people can make their application. And then Barbara um, fulfills those applications based on the criteria. If you, if you look at the individual category, um, if you start dispersing monies to individuals as applications come in, you have no idea how many people are gonna eventually apply. So if you have an application period where you know that, okay, I should, you know, I was harmed by this, I would feel I deserve some funds, you would apply within that period. If there are 200 respondents, then you're going to have to rethink the readjust, you know, your maximum amounts and whatnot. Because to be fair to all the people that apply, you're not going to just want to start giving out up to five thousand dollars to the first few people who apply, and then realize that 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 was too much money because the number of individuals harmed. Uh, you're not gonna. You're you're gonna have nothing left over in that category for a majority of them. It is our because recommendation, but it is our recommendation, Rufus, that a hundred thousand dollars be allocated uh, for grants for up to five thousand dollars. First come, first serve. Move the money out to individuals. There is a provision in our report that recommends that should any of those pots of money, 100,000, 100,000, and 200,000 end up with excess after the period is over, that that could be reallocated to those different categories. But this recommendation, Rufus, is based on our discussion of the survey results, our focus groups, and our one-on-one -on -one conversations. We believe that $100,000 will accommodate what you're going to get. Uh, we could be wrong, it's true, but we believe this is the best way to move the funds out. And this is, I mean, that recommendation was made after much discussion and deliberation among our committee. And um, was it the same with the, the cap, the $5,000 per person cap? Was that yes. feedback and based on information that we received from the survey, uh, based on reports that were made by survey respondents about the magnitude of their harm. Okay, thanks Connie. I think Joe has his hand up again. Thank you. Yeah, um, just a couple of things. Um, first. Uh, first of all, I don't, can, can you hear me? Yep. Every, okay. Uh, a couple of things. First of all, um, just to get back to Matt Winter's um, question about any if any group uh, nonprofit would be bypassed, um, I think that was one of our the concerns of the committee to set a cap, um, you know, at fifteen thousand. Uh, just to to limit so no one no group would be bypassed um, uh, I'm, uh, uh, and just now for, for Rufus's um, question about uh, for the individual um, grants for individual residents and so forth um, you know if there is 
a um, a great demand for uh, for these grants. Um, there is the option for for people to turn to the social service department here in town for you know for any um, for help that they may need in paying bills or you know or for whatever the situation may be. Um, and Barbara, can you just remind us again, um, as far as the, um, with the treasury, the reporting. So if we, um, if we give out a grant to, um, Hinkle Hollow Church of Northern Hinkle Hollow for, um, replacing gravestones that have been knocked over during the pandemic just making this up as I go along. And they um, don't use that for, they, they end up using the funding for something else and they, um, and it, which makes, which is an ineligible um, reason is, does the treasury come back to, the treasury comes back to us if there was an audit and that was discovered and they would, could do a claw back to us or they would do a claw back to them. I'm assuming it's to us because we're the grantee. Uh, yes, but your, the answer to your question is really two part. Okay. So before any funding is dispersed to anyone, there's a grant agreement that will need to be signed. And that includes individuals, businesses, nonprofits, anybody that receives one ARPA dollar. Within that agreement, it, outlines that the funding is expected to be spent in the way that they implied on their application. It also leaves a provision in there for the town to review how the money was spent and to claw the money back at our own level before we have to do any reporting. If it gets all the way to the point where we've reported it to the federal government and they determined that it was non-compliant, they would come back to the town for recapture of those funds. So we tried to build in a process so that that would not happen. Okay, thanks. Like I, I, um, can I can say what, oh, sorry, anyone else I, out there? If I could say one thing, just as a member of the committee, um, I, I want to thank this committee uh, uh, for its professionalism, for its diligence, um, its thoroughness. I mean, I mean, you know, we met many, many times and, um, and we considered um, as much as we could consider, I think. And, um, you know, we, we reached out to the community in multiple ways. Um, and what, what I enjoyed was looking at what other towns did. Um, we, uh, we compiled uh, some information about uh, other towns in our area, um, both large and small. And when you look at the pool of money and these six categories, um, you know, we as a committee didn't always agree. <laughs> you know, we, uh, we, we talked about this over and over and over again. And, um, uh, you know, some, some, some towns out there spent quite a bit on infrastructure upgrades, by far the most, maybe 80% of what they received from the government. Um, others, municipal projects. Uh, but I think this committee, and certainly for myself, uh, I, I felt strongly that we needed to, to reach an agreement with ourselves to reach um, some kind of median uh, and reach as many people as possible. So these six categories, uh, I think more than some other towns, like we really spread it out. And these, these pools are pretty similar relative to other towns. Uh, and um, and I, I, I appreciated the work that we did uh, and, and the thought that went into this, uh, went, went to these numbers. And, um, and, and, and to thank the citizens of the town of Kent, because we had a lot of feedback and that that was very helpful in coming up with these numbers. Yeah, the the outpouring from the public was amazing, and um, equally amazing was the committee's, um, you know, sort of uh, wherewithal to 
there were a lot of so many comments, so many comments, and for you all to have to pour through them and sort of consume them and and get to the point where you are here um, was a pretty amazing process. Um, it's so a stress too. Thanks to all say, around. Thank you, and and to say this too uh, to everybody that um, that. Yes, I mean we have we have a number here. There's the, the, there's pools. There's the the, the six categories, um, and maybe with three of them, with the application process, maybe we we fill all of that money. Maybe maybe we do not. So if there's anything that's left uh, in pool one, that can be put into another pool, uh, and and the same thing with number two and number three. Um, and then of course there is a reserve unallocated. Fund there. There's eleven thousand eight hundred fifty-five dollars, which you know we felt should be in reserve just in case we missed something, just in case there was something that needed to be addressed. Um, so, um, so there's there's definitely uh, guidelines here, um, plenty of them, uh, but there is also some wiggle room. Uh, should we should we think that um, you know some other group needs some funding funding? Just scanning for hands. I don't see any more. Yeah, I don't see any more either. So I think we sort of lumped Q&A and public comment together. Um, so looking to see if the board is looking to take action on any of this tonight. Um, I'd like to hear from, from Rufus and Glenn. I, I'd like to say I, for one, having been on the committee uh, for so long, n knowing how much work was put into this and knowing how, and, and knowing how people out there have looked to us, both the committee and the Board of Selectmen, um, to, to move on this uh, because the pandemic has been uh, going on and on, continues, and some people have been, um, some people and in institutions have been harmed. And I think some people could use some, uh, some, some help right now. And uh, I, for one, am happy with this report. Um, I, I, I can live with all of this. Uh, and um, I would love for us to make a decision tonight to move on this if we could. Is that a motion, Glenn? <laughs> I not to overstep make... Barbara, but <laughs> <laughs> I shall make a motion unless. Okay. How about this? I have one written. Uh, I move that the Board of Selectmen accept the ARPA Needs Assessment Committee's assessment and recommendation report as submitted June 6, 2022. Second. So just for clarification, that motion was just to accept it, not to ratify it. Let's see, I'll read it again. Um, I move that the Board of Selectmen accept the report. Are you interchanging the word accept with ratify? Because a lot of times, at the municipal level, when we accept something, that basically means we receive it and that's it. Okay, so I should cross out accept. So maybe- What I meant was ratify. You, right, so let's just make sure that we get the motion that you wanna make okay. correct before okay. you make it. So why don't you again. Um, withdraw that motion? I'll withdraw my second. Um, and then we can do a little wordsmithing if you'd like to. <laughs> okay. Okay, so first motion is rescinded. 
so I'm, and I'm rescinding my second. Okay. Uh, okay. So I shall so make a in discussion of oh. what you might want to um, put forth for a motion. In discussion. Okay. Um, I'll, I can read again what I said with, uh, with the different word. Yeah. So I think talking about, you know, discussing ratify versus accept. So rat as Barbara mentioned, ratify is taking everything in the report and, um, you know, moving it on as is exactly in the report with no changes. Accepting it is accepting it. And we would likely have one more meeting to get a little bit more in the weeds and flesh out any other questions that we might have. Okay. So I'll I mean, again, I, um, and, you know, accepting it is fine. There are certain things that I have a little bit of disagreement with. I mean, I, I, I really like what I talked about before with the individuals. I think you probably want to shorten the application process, but see how many apply and then make that decision. Because if, you know, um, I, I don't think that you necessarily want to first come first serve people who have more time or whatever are the first ones there. Their needs may or may not be as important or not as important, well, important to them um, as some of the other people who takes a little while longer to get an application in because they're working overtime and everything else and they're struggling to try to get an application in. I'd rather see, at least in the individual pool. Somebody's off. Um, if they could go on mute, we're getting some background noise. So Rufus, I, I think I see what you're saying. So um, Connie and, and Barbara and any of the other committee members. So when you, obviously, when you do the straight math, it comes out to 20 people, 20 individuals for that, just dealing with that first tranche. Um, what, and that was based on um, the feedback in the survey and the feedback in the one-on-ones and the focus groups that you, in your estimation, and I'm not asking you to, you know, have a crystal ball at all. <laughs> um, just looking for your thinking behind, you, you think it would, it would likely be um, 20 or fewer individuals. Right. Um, our, our conclusion was based on, you know, taking into account those survey responses and the one-on-one -on -one interviews and the focus groups. I, uh, you know, just to get into the nuance a little bit more, the survey uh, asked people, you know, for different denominations of, uh, you know, of damage that they had or harm that they had. Uh, 5,000 was kind of in the middle of that, right? So not every individual indicated that they had 5,000 or more than that uh, uh, of harm. Uh, in fact, the, the denominations went, uh, you know, went further than that. So we did not pick like the, you know, the, the largest number in uh, recognition that we'd like to serve as many people um, as possible. Our discussion also, uh, you know, centered around the fact that, you know, substantial financial documentation would be required in uh, conjunction with this application and that not every individual in Kent who might need this uh, would be likely to apply, which is, um, you know, that is just, you know, a, a reality uh, of people in need that everybody who is in need would be somebody who would, uh, you know, take the step to provide, uh, you know, really extensive information about their finances uh, in order to, um, you know, to, to receive funding. So, uh, you know, there was some back and forth in our committee about this. There were some guesses made about how many people, whether it was fewer or more than uh, the people that might be served by that $100,000 pot. 
I think that it probably does make sense, Rufus, to keep an eye on it, but I also wouldn't wait because I think that we had the discussion that you will have uh, around this. And I think that we came up with what we really do feel is the best recommendation and way of, uh, of handling uh, this particular class uh, or pool of potential applicants. Okay, I have to watch I need that decision now. Somebody has um, got a lot of background noise. Um, I'm just going to pop folks on mute so that we can. So what happened when I learned? Well, the, everything I do, people know that I did. So I have a little bit more responsibility. And Here we go. I don't know who that was, but we fixed it. <laughs> So, um, <laughs> what would happen, Barbara, if you have um, two people in the same household who um, submit an application each for $5,000? I'm just going to close my front door because it's loud. I'm just going to wait for Jean to come back before. Oh, sorry. I didn't mean for everybody to wait. That's Thanks. okay. There's a lot of road noise. Um, I guess that depends. Are they a married couple and each person's going to say they were economically harmed and both people are going to submit an application or is it? Yeah, let's say if that's the, that's the scenario. Different people. Well, I think for the first exercise, we're going to a couple like that would, it's gonna go by their tax returns and how they were each economically harmed. And so that's gonna be a, a little bit of a bigger discussion than just one application. So it, a lot of this is gonna be on a case by case basis. And also it's gonna be determined by what they can produce as evidence of their economic harm. Okay. And I also wanted to say, just to Rufus's point, we purposefully made the application process eight weeks so that some people who are ready tomorrow to submit an application can, but it also leaves enough time for other people who, who aren't quite ready or who may wanna do it a little bit later or need time to gather information or they're working full time and they can only address it on the weekends, that kind of thing. So, that's why we came up with the parameters that we did. So I would think, Barbara, that in a situation where two people in the same household are applying, that the $5,000 limit would apply to the household. Again, I agree. At least in the beginning, because, you know, if if two people do that, there's ten thousand dollars, and and all of a sudden you're you you potentially are looking at only ten households in Kent getting served by the people who are the most prepared or the most savvy, um, and I don't think that is right. Well, I agree, and I don't think that there's one blanket answer that is for every single application. Each application will be looked at on its own merit. So. But the committee does feel very strongly that this process needs to start. Sorry, we derailed a little bit away from your motion, Glenn, but I think that was a good conversation to just drill down on a little bit. No, I agree. Okay. And do you currently have, um, I'm sorry, I lost my place. Do you, you currently have some correspondence from um, local businesses, correct? who are um who have communicated interest in some funding yes and to reiterate what i said earlier 
if if this is completely ratified today and we start this process tomorrow, it was the discussion of the committee that I would reach out to everyone that has contacted me or the committee and explain to them what the process is and provide them with the application, et cetera. Okay, but I think we also so need to do a wide, um, you know, notification out to through constant contact website, social media, chamber. That's in the recommendation as well. Right, and I, I would do that first before you give people individuals. I, you, you know, again, everybody needs to have equitable, an equal starting point. So I do not think you should individually, I, this should be a, you know, a town-wide starting gun through the website, through everything else. Okay. Yeah, I think Rufus, that is consistent with what we were thinking. We just didn't want anyone who might have communicated with us a year ago and given up by now <laughs> to think that, you know, we wanted to make sure that folks who were needy a year ago and let us know about it knew that the process had, you know, of our making our assessment had concluded and that there was uh, an opportunity for them, uh, you know, to, to uh, you know, to address some of that harm now. So I, I don't really think it was ever the intention of the committee that we, you know, try and uh, reach out to people so that they could be first out of the gate. Um, only that we had some sort of a responsiveness to them because we felt that that uh, was an obligation given that they had reached out. Right, but you know, it, it's still the, those who, you know, I, I really feel that, that at least with the individuals that there has to be an evening of the, of the application process so that you don't know. I mean, we're a town of huge disparity and people who are, have made it through but have had some damage could easily apply for and get money when um, there are people who are, are severely damaged but don't have the wherewithal. Um, they don't get out of the gate first. Yeah. You know, so I think that's a real concern in my head. Mm -hmm. that, Again, I think that what we're proposing is consistent because there was no, there's no, unlike with the nonprofits, there is no hybrid for the individuals. There is no idea that some individuals would be served de facto or that letters would go out to anyone first before anything got published. You know, I, I think it is very much on the mind of our committee and very much part of our discussions. And I would encourage you to listen to our meeting recordings. Uh, if you have any doubt about that, that there would be a very fair, equitable process for people who were harmed to be able to apply for this funding. Um, if you're that worried about it, Rufus, perhaps it's a good idea for the Board of Selectmen to appoint someone to assist those who don't have the wherewithal to apply for the applications for this eight week period um, to help those people to do that. Do you know yeah. what I'm saying? It could be that um, you appoint someone um, who you can call upon to help those individuals who have trouble um, completing the application on their own in the eight week, within the eight week period um, to do their applications. I think that could be. Um... Be a com I think that's a great idea, Patricia. Um, and I think that could be accomplished by way of Barbara is still the single point of contact in for any um, anything having to do 
with the applicant, you know, all these application processes, and then she can um, hand off somebody who wants, you know, maybe they're not a, you know, they don't have access to the internet or they um, struggle with an online form or don't like an online form, they could come in and sit with uh, Samantha Hassenflu from social services. She has that rhythm. She has that experience to assist someone in person. And it's also, you know, confidential atmosphere for her to, to have with them in the social services office. So that could be sort of an obvious handoff. Yeah, um, one thing that I wanted to mention uh, in regard to, um, to Rufus's uh, concern before is that when the committee was in the process of preparing the recommendations, there was, it was kind of a um, period where there was no one um, in place at the social services department. There was an interim uh, position that was filled. So it was kind of difficult to try to get some data from that department. So the committee had to rely on the, the survey and some input from the focus groups is, as to the uh, condition for the uh, individuals and residents, uh, how they were uh, affected by the pandemic. I just would thought I would throw that out there. So, and that can be part of the messaging that we put together to go out with this, um, you know, this push. I'm just rethinking the hybrid approach on the category three from the last five or six minutes of conversation. And I know there's a lot of money left in that pool. Um, I don't know, how do you, Rufus Glenn, how do you feel about leaving this as the, um, the six, right? One, two, three. Well, I see that as, you know, the, I see some flexibility built into this. I, you know, I think we have to see what the nonprofits do. There is money that could go into the individual tranche if necessary or back and forth. I mean, there are some other things that I think aren't in here at all that, um, we might want to look at. Um, such as? Such as um, medical transportation needs um, and stuff like that, uh, which we we're starting to look at um, how some of our residents can get to doctors and hospital appointments and things like that. Um, who, have no way of getting there. Um, so that that's one thing. Um, and you know what Matt Starr talked about might might possibly fit in. And so I, I do see flexibility in here. I mean, ultimately, according to ARPA, who makes the final decision? Is it the subcommittee or is it the Board of Selectmen? I was told by our previous auditor that it was the first selectman and the treasurer. And depending on how they utilize the funding, different towns are doing different things because there is a provision in the ARPA final rule that allows municipalities to take the funding into the general fund. And if that provision is invoked and they do that, then the funding decisions and the spending decisions end up in the taxpayers eventually through the budgeting process. So it all depends on how you handle the money when, you, when the town receives it. So right now, 
the money is just sitting uh, and it's still at the level that was intended by the, the federal government that it's the, according to our last auditor, the treasurer and the first select person. And Barbara, according to the report, uh, we got the first tranche uh, in June 17th of 21. And did we receive the second um, five days ago? No, the state has not released any of the second tranche money yet. Okay. They're still finalizing the process, I believe. I don't okay. know, we've gotten a couple of emails, but nothing has been finalized. Yeah, I did just yesterday um, send over to OPMs, um, they wanted to make sure that the contact information was still um, current for the, the primary contacts for the portal for, um, you know, as the funding come in, comes in. So that sort of was a little bit of a um, trigger that I'm sure it's coming shortly. So we're reasonably sure that we're going to get the rest of the funding within eight weeks, <laughs> that's, uh, oh. that's okay. No question. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. okay. Absolutely. All right. So Glenn. Rufus. Um, to be honest with you, the one thing that I saw in here that I was like, I put a huge question mark at was the blueberry orchard. <laughs> and the reason I thought about that was that's a perfect opportunity for kids to refurbish it themselves. Why do you need $10,000 for blueberries? That, um, that came that, you know, that, that, that didn't actually come from the CFO of Marvwood at first, when I spoke, when I first spoke with him, um, that came, uh, from elsewhere, uh, lots of, um, of folks in town uh, enjoy those blueberry blueberry bushes um, for years, even before Marvin was there. Um, I think uh, uh, local folks have come up uh, to Kent to pick those. Uh, and um, recently, it seems blueberries do have a a, a shelf life. Uh, blueberry bushes, that is, uh, and um, uh, and some of them, the the yield has not been been good in the last two years. Uh, and um, the uh, spongy moth caterpillar infestation hasn't helped either. Uh, so, um, so Marvwood does have a community service program. We do have kids, uh, you know, working on those bushes uh, every Wednesday. Uh, but unfortunately, between the life of the bushes and uh, some pests, um, uh, the, the blueberries do need some some help. Uh, and um, and this was an idea that came out um, in in. Um, in correspondence, uh, and uh, and some people miss uh, miss picking the blueberries, which occur uh, late July uh, through August. Uh, so it's not certainly not all year, uh, but um, you know, and uh, and that's uh, that's just part of the report. So with with due respect to the select board, uh, you know, we did meet thirty one times. <laughs> we had many conversations uh, in accordance with your charge to us. Uh, as you heard in our statement, we feel very strongly that we presented uh, a fair, a very well-reasoned, a comprehensive uh, report to you with recommendations, just so you would not have to have these same conversations. If you do, and you, it is your prerogative to have these same conversations, I will say that that makes me somewhat sad that we spent all of those hours, uh, usually, you know, one to, to two hours, maybe even a, some two and a half hour meetings. I know that you meet long and hard. Uh, and I, I assume that you would not uh, be that happy if you met and then there was another body that needed to meet and have the same conversations afterwards. So, uh, you know, I, I respect that there might be questions about things like that Marvel would request. Uh, it might be interesting for you to know that there is a community service day there. I think it's this Saturday, that it's not the case that volunteers are being replaced by town funds uh, in the case of that particular request. Uh, but also, 
that the work that we did, we felt alleviated you of doing the same work uh, that, that we did over the course of a year. Um, and so, uh, you know, if I can just again, bring us back to that statement, our closing statement, uh, I really hope uh, that, um, you know, if there's questions about how we came to our conclusions that, uh, you know, you we're here tonight for you um, and uh, that that you don't need to repeat all of the work that, that we've done, um, you know, as volunteers over the course of this last year. I don't, I, I, thanks for that, Connie. I don't, I don't think that Rufus was um, you know, trying to marginalize the huge body of work you all have gone through in the past year at all. I wasn't. In yeah. fact, I, think I was looking at, you know, as having somebody who taught high school for 30 years for my career, that, it, you know, when you own a blueberry orchard on your school grounds, that that becomes a, a phenomenal project. And you might not have to go outside for funds. I also think that Marvelwood is a phenomenal school for community um, volunteerism. And they've helped me as a chore coordinator in New Melford more than any other school in the area. And kudos to them for their community outreach. I have to go. I, um, so Glenn, if you want to make your motion to ratify, go ahead. Ready? Okay. Yep. All right. I move that the Board of Selectmen ratify the ARPA Needs Assessment Committee's Assessment and Recommendation Report submitted on June 6th, 2022. Second. So as part of just a brief discussion, I know you have to go, Rufus. Um, one of the questions that I didn't get to ask, there was some funding for the fire department that um, they had asked for that didn't come through. There was um, money for AEDs that it looks like it was left at 10,000, but they were looking, they they asked for more for the AEDs, not just the stair chair. So that was one of the questions. I believe that the fire department's request exceeded the $80,000 we had allocated to them. So we chose from among the specific requests. Okay. Oh, so you're in your, six categories you decided that or the committee decided that it was going to be 80,000 got it i get i see yes and if they um don't use thirty thousand dollars for the um fitness room upgrade they could put some of that towards um one of their other needs mm -hmm. okay um, and just something that the board should know about is the um, under A for um, the infrastructure upgrades for the um, sewer plant. Um, we're, there's, you know, this enormous amount of money that's coming through the federal government for, um, for infrastructure and does it make sense to use up $110,000 here um, when we'll likely see grant funds come through there? We also just got notification that the state is doing another round of steep funding for this coming up year. Um, so I, you know, I, it's something that I guess I'm not, I'm not sure if I'm ready to ratify everything on here because I, I still have a couple more questions, but I know Rufus has to go. Um, another question was, will, you know, if an organization received um, PPP funding, does that um, make a difference in someone's 
in an organization's application for um, for a, a grant from us? Yes. Mm -hmm. All of that would be disclosed during the application process. Okay, and so if they received PPP funding, um, then that changes their their eligibility for. I'm not sure if I'm going to define it that way. Okay. PPP funding would have to be disclosed, and it will be taken into account as each individual application is assessed. And as far as the WPCA goes, that funding that's coming from the federal government is months, if not years away. And the Kent Sewer Commission needs that funding now to start the engineering for the big project that they have coming. So it's pretty imperative for them to get this. Just and the other, you know, the infrastructure, Gene, a lot of that, there's, no mention of, with broadband, you know, that was a big issue for infrastructure. So that money could go to, you know, trying to upgrade. I think that uh, ultimately for the kids, especially if, if there's more online schooling and stuff down the road, um, I think we're responsible that every kid has equal opportunity to participate and have access through broadband. So a lot of that infrastructure money should be earmarked for that. So I, we have, if there are these questions, then are we, are we just, are we pushing this through? Um, Uh, too quickly. Well, I think you have a couple of questions about infrastructure issues, but there's a lot more to this report. And to the extent that you hold up money for, let's say, the Board of Education's summer um, reading program, which um, I'm sure they need now, or for our recommendation for senior citizen program, which is um, substantial and much needed. Um, maybe there is a way that you can um, ratify it in its, um, and the infrastructure piece um, you can put aside for more discussion later. Yeah, I like, I like the way you're thinking. <laughs> Patricia, I would almost like to, to take the first three um, uh, categories and ratify those and have Barbara just move forward starting Friday <laughs> with them. Um, you know, I do have a couple of questions on infrastructure and municipal projects, but again, I know Rufus has to go and we also have a motion on the table, which is to ratify the entire thing. and you're willing to um and you can't go forward with municipal because i think there's some things that are needed now like the hybrid meeting equipment like the board of education summer program funding like you know it would be good to start some senior programming sooner rather than later so um i suggest the first four So I don't know if we are um, entertaining a friendly amendment. I do have um, questions. You know, we're part in the final rule, Barbara. Isn't there something about? Well, never mind. Um, the the, the ten thousand dollars for the purchase of the Chromebooks for the land use office and commissioners. Um, that's going to be more than. $10,000, that's, we're going to incur other costs besides the cost of the Chromebooks. Um, I, I think that is a bigger conversation that we need to have at the Board of Selectmen level and the, the, you know, staff and town hall and commissions level, because um, maybe it makes, 
so it, there is going to be additional funding that's going to have to be extended expended to get those Chromebooks oh. off the ground in the in the building and off the ground. Mm -hmm. So it's not ten thousand dollars. It's going to be more than that. So what this does, Gene, though, is it puts ten thousand dollars into that pocket, and mm -hmm. then we have to figure out for the rest of it. It doesn't have to be, you know, that $10,000 does not have to be spent immediately. But if we ratify this, it, it, it basically. We have to figure out how to come up with the remainder if it's, if it's cost more than that. Um, could I make a suggestion? Um, I'd like to make a suggestion that we have another meeting uh, to discuss these things because these are, there's a lot of questions and a lot of things that need to be uh, discussed and in, 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 in looked into. Does anybody else agree with that? We found that for our meetings, it was most helpful to make progress. And so it might be the case that you could ratify at least the allocation amounts this evening if you have questions about the municipal and the infrastructure components. Uh, but that way you would be able to disperse the fire department funds and take care of those three classes of, of uh, individuals and entities that have been waiting, get that in motion. And if you needed to come back to think about the apportionment of the allocations that have been recommended for infrastructure and for municipal, you would know what the pots of money were uh, and you don't have to make those uh, decisions that you may not be ready for, to do tonight. So that was something that we found very helpful in our uh, subcommittee meetings that we could agree at least uh, on the allocation amounts. And then we did come back for further discussion on you know, what the components of those allocations might be. That, that is probably a good compromise. Yeah. So I, if, if with that in mind, I would rescind my second. I think that's a, a, a nudge Glenn, <laughs> to, to you. <laughs> Just send the motion. So let's, let's wordsmith um, okay. something that we can move forward. So we could, we could ratify, uh, we could accept the thorough ARPA report and ratify the six category amounts. And Barb would be able to start with the application process for the first three. All right, so I'm trying to type here. There we go. Get the name right. And ratify the <laughs> Six categories or the amount or the amount amounts for the six categories. And Recommended the amounts for the six categories. And do we want to put in a third um, piece about the first three categories? Oh, just no. Say that again, somebody. Um, and yeah, for the first three, for the individuals, the 
businesses and nonprofits categories that um, the application process begin immediately. For the um, the aid to individuals and families, local businesses and nonprofits. Yeah. I get this. Gene, I think you have to say ratify the six category pool amounts. Thank you. Yeah. Rufus, it's late in the day for me for that kind of um, grammar. How do I, um, where's my apostrophe on categories or is there? It should be six hyphen category. Six category pool amounts, yeah. Six categories of? No, that's not. No. Right. No. It six just you hyphenate two words that. Um, there, there would probably be an apostrophe after the S. Six categories pool amounts. And begin the application process. Microsoft is okay with that. Um, I'm sorry to butt in, but what about the fire department? What? I mean, that is that uh, the amounts are, I mean, would you disperse to the fire department knowing that that, I mean, this, it seems like the infrastructure of the <laughs> Sorry, I just realized that was very small. Can you all see that now? Yes. Um, do we want to also put something in about um, the treasurer being the administrator? Thank you. How are we feeling about that? Uh, uh, what what is uh, the application process for the Kent Volunteer Fire Department? They're not applying for anything, right? What is what is that? Uh... Oh, but yeah, nonprofits. Period, and disperse to the Kent Volunteer Fire Department its pool amount. Well, since you're going to do disperse funds to volunteer fire department, not to be a broken record, but could you also disperse to the board of ed? Um, because um, teachers, as we all know, were heroes of the pandemic. Um, and the we've heard a lot about um, students um, falling behind in reading and math skills and socialization skills. So I don't know if you need to um, hold back on that. And I also don't know why you would hold back on the money for the hybrid meeting equipment. So I would say to the Kent Volunteer Fire Department, the Board of Ed and the hybrid meeting equipment. Just my suggestion, but <clears throat> I just want to um, make sure that we're, are we, <laughs> the sentence is getting long. 
I, I mean, I, I think this is good for tonight, to be honest with you. And then we look at the other two and um, we're meeting in, a, what, a week? Two weeks. Two weeks. So we deal with the municipal projects and infrastructure. Is Scott Trabuco, are you still on the call? I am. Um, how does this, how might um, us uh, delaying two weeks on the Board of Ed program, um, would that, would the program be negatively impacted if we didn't make that decision or ratify that until um, the 7th of July? I mean, we're ready. We just had a meeting last night uh, of our community relations committee. We're gonna meet again next week to formally appoint the board of this nonprofit and then we're ready to get going. So that money is uh, very important to start the process and that would be what would be our hurdle right now. So we, we could use it as soon as possible. Um, what is that program? Sorry, 26,000. Yeah, I was looking for the name of the program. Um, Summer Education Enrichment. Uh, it's for a nonprofit enrichment program, I think would be more uh, accurate. So the report says that it's to the Board of Education for their proposed after school and summer education enrichment program. I can't answer for uh, what's in the report. That is, you know, essentially what we're talking. We're, you know, we're forming a nonprofit enrichment program that will offer after school program, before school programming, um, programming within the school, you know, during the school day. I, you know, I, I don't. So the funding, that money would go to the Board of Ed or it would go to a new think... non, non for profit? Event where it really would go is to this new nonprofit. Um, but I believe we talked about this last night and if the allocation was made to the board of ed, we believe that um, we would be able to transfer that legally to the nonprofit. So I, I think either way would be acceptable to us. The money would be for the nonprofit. It would be, it would go into the nonprofit's bank account for their expenses, the their board. startup expenses and the, the Board of Education does have a, an activity fund that's held here at the town, so the money could certainly go there and be utilized through the activity fund for this summer program. Okay. Okay. I just don't want to get caught in a motion that is going to be um, not legal. Are you going to address the funding for the uh, remote meeting Zoom room or whatever it is that it's called? I think that can wait until the 7th. Um, this motion is getting really long. I don't think there's any, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, board, but I don't think there's any question about that. Um, I just, this is a really long motion. <laughs> How are we feeling about the wordsmith on this? Uh, I think we need to break this up. And then if you want it to be perfect, um, when you're, if you do it as, apostrophe after the S of categories, you don't need the hyphen. Okay. Thank you, Patricia. <laughs> A grammar fellow.
should the last um, one be to appoint the ten, the, to appoint if you want consistency, and they all have two to accept, to disperse, to appoint the town of Kent treasurer as administrator of programs. Then it's you know it's all parallel structure. Barbara, do you think it um, helps making part of the motion an appointment for you? Yes. Or Microsoft doesn't like that. Um, yeah, because it's S apostrophe, yeah. <laughs> Alrighty, I will um, make the motion, make a motion to accept the ARPA needs assessment committee's assessment and recommendations report, ratify the six categories pool amounts, and to begin the process, to begin the application process for aid to individuals and families, local businesses and nonprofits to disperse funds to the Kent Volunteer Fire Department and the Board of Education after school and summer education enrichment program excuse me, to appoint the town of Kent treasurer, the administrator of the programs. Second. All right, I'm gonna come off screen chair, but I'm gonna save that for Joyce. <laughs> um, and I'm sorry that we lost Rufus. Um, His phone is still on. Oh, wait, say that again? His phone is still here. Oh, great, okay. He's on the um, move. Rufus, you can, oh, there you are. He's on the move. <laughs> Um, board, do we have any further um, conversation, discussion? And I appreciate the back and forth and, and getting to this point where we can, we've ratified what we're going to. All righty. Rufus, okay. if you can hear us, we're looking for a hand for, cause we're gonna vote. All those in favor of the motion? Aye. Aye. Super. Stop. We are at, hold on, I got to get back to my agenda. Um, we have taken action <laughs> and we are at the point of adjournment. According to Apple, it is six. Dean, before you adjourn, I yes. have a procedural question about uh, our subcommittee. Uh, I, um, I, don't know if we have fulfilled our charge. I don't know if you would uh, prefer us to be present at the next discussion that you have about this. I'm looking for direction there. Yeah, I think it would be a huge help for you all to come to the seventh um, BOS meeting and be part of that, this next tail end of the discussion and we'll hold off um, any movement or adjourning of your committee while you have completed your charge very fully. <laughs> Again, appreciate that. Great. Well, thank you. I, we, we do appreciate so much your, uh, you know, your consideration and deliberations tonight. Um, thank you. Yeah, I think it was a great conversation. So it is now 614. And I'll just make one more plug going right into the affordable housing plan um, informational session. So um, anyone who wants to hop on that um, Zoom, but at 614, I will um, adjourn this meeting. And again, thanks everybody and uh, have a great evening. Thank, Thank you. you.